Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Spiderone, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing item states and controlling them via procedures. Item states are handled completely within the items.json file and require little to no code. To do this, we're going to be making use of custom model data. Custom model data is a vanilla friendly way to make item states and can be used to modify both modded and vanilla textures alike. Obviously, the first step will be making the textures you want for your item states. Next, we're going to create two elements, the main item and the item stack item. The item stack item is just there to generate a .json file. After we extract that, we're going to delete the item, so don't worry, these are real item states. All that matters with the second element is the ID, model, and texture. Now within the main item, you're going to want to use the when item in inventory tick trigger. On this, we're going to apply our item state procedure. This is going to be what determines the conditions. The sample procedure will be in the description of the video. All that you need to do is set custom model data with the CM and D being capital to zero for no item state data and one for item state data. This can support over 100,000 different item states. Here I have two examples where you can set it based on if the player is sneaking or if the item stack is in your main hand. In a future video, I'll have a lot more in depth and more complicated conditions. However, I thought for the video, we should keep it nice and simple. So create this procedure and apply it to the when item in inventory tick. Next up, if you want the item state to only work when it's in your player's hand or when you're sneaking and not a permanent thing like if it has an enchantment or other conditions, then you're going to go into event trigger, global trigger gem dropped, and check to see if the gem dropped is an item that has an item state, and if so, set the custom model data to zero. These are the only two procedures you need, and this procedure is only needed once per workspace, as you can stack all of your item stacks with inside of it. Next up, we're going to extract the item stack from our secondary item. You do this by going into its JSON file, going back to your workspace, deleting it, reopening your item stack underscore one.json file, and saving it, lock the code. Next, we're going to apply the item state to the main item. Do so by opening up the main items.json file and copying in the code that's in the description. You're going to have to edit it a little bit. First off, replace the mod ID with your code's mod ID. Next up, for layer 0, this is going to be the texture of the default state, which is going to be right here. For every other state, you're not going to use a texture, you're going to use the model, which is what this is, the, the JSON file for the item you deleted. So to get the model, it'll be your mod ID, item, slash, and the JSON name of the item you deleted, item underscore stack underscore one, or whatever you called yours. Once you have that, go ahead and delete the original code that was there. Save and lock. That's all there is to making the item states. It's really that simple. And as you can see, when I hold the texture, it's setting the item state data to zero. And when I'm not, it's setting it to one. So now the pot is cracked. That's all for today's video. There will be a future video where I show more in depth, specific, and advanced ways to use item states. Bye.